Welcome back, brothers, to yet a special episode here. Well, should every episode is special here on the O'Shea Duke Jackson channel. And man, do we have a doozy for you. You know that me, myself, I'm not necessarily a person that's in the dating industry. Uh, but you know, I do uh, own and operate NegroManistry.com, which is about 45% dating. We need Ram and Alan Roger Curry. And one of the best dating coaches, I don't care, black or white or yellow, whatever it is, is this gentleman right here uh, that's on with me today, man. Is he an excellent content creator? He's one of the best content creators in black YouTube, period. And that is uh, Mr. Lucario, uh, known as the Lucario Fan Channel. Uh, and today we're going to be dealing with a really good topic. And this topic is why women should treat you like the God that you are. Stemming from his first video, why women should just treat you like a God. But I wanted to make it, you know, make y'all feel good at the end. and Like the God that you are, you know. Some of y'all ain't shit, but y'all going to really feel good. Like, yeah, I'm really a God, I know. So we wanted to throw that Give you a boost your confidence up real quick. And, and, and again, guys, come in and like the video and subscribe to Mr. Lucario. You can go do that in the description of the Lucario fan channel. What's going on, Mr. Lucario? What up? What's good? What's going on, man? I'm glad to be here again. You know, let's go with you. Man, you know, I'm, 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 I'm trying to get my hairline like yours, player. But besides that, everything is good, brother. Thank you for coming back and wanting to share your experiences and your knowledge with, 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 with our brothers over here. Uh, in the manosphere, you know, I gotta. I mean, before before we get started, I know everybody does know you for the most part, but for, for those people who don't know you, uh, let them know who you are, what you do. All right, cool. What up? Uh, so, for those who don't know, my name is Mr. Locario, uh, known as the bad boy of the dating game. I'm a dating and life coach, so I've been doing this for the past 10 years. Um, I'm the author of this book, How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day. This is a, a, a bestseller. This is the joint. If you don't got this, you gotta go to mrlocario.com to get your copy. Um, I coach men and women, and I basically, you know, tell people like how they can get what they really want in their dating life. So I try to really go out there and, and give people this truth. You feel what I'm saying? So that they can really apply it to their lives and get things going the way they want it to go. You feel me? Okay. And, he, and he's damn good at what he does. Like I said, he's one of the best content creators uh, in YouTube period, not just in black YouTube. But let me kind of get into the title, brother, because before we do a show, you know, it's customary. <laughs> That I before and we you know we don't pick the topic uh, like a day ahead. I pick the topic like because you're so talented, you'd be like, "What do you want to talk about?" Like yeah, five minutes before the show, we can go in. That's all. That's how we do it. Every yeah, that's time how we do. Like yo, like pick something. Just to, you know, what pick saying? anything. Yeah, and, and so um, I, there was a a, um, a few videos, the fake fake players. I like that really good. Uh, but when I saw this title, I said, "Wow." Why women should treat you like the God that you are. I said, uh-oh, or treat you like a God. I said, well, let, let's, let's do this one. I didn't even watch this video because I want to be shocked, too. I listened to the front part of you and Miles Cunningham, but then I said, you know what? Let me stop it. Let, let me be shocked also. Uh, why did you pick this particular? Well, what, what, was, what is the inspiration behind this topic? It was funny, actually. Me, me and my dude, Miles, we were uh, <laughs> we was in a car and shit. He was driving or whatever. And he asked me, he was like, yo, what do you really uh, want chicks for? Like, what's what, what's what, what's the point of, like, really getting these girls and making this stuff happen? And so, basically, I was just saying, like, you know, because some guys will say they want to have sex, they want to do this, whatever. And so, I was saying, like, I don't just want a chick for sex. You feel me? Like, I want, like, I was saying I want her soul. You feel what I mean? I want her, when she responds to me, that she responds to me like she's responding to God. You feel what I'm saying? To where... The, she sees me as that valuable you understand to her life to her existence to her feeling like hey this is the type of dude that i need to be you know in his life and i gotta follow his direction i gotta actually be on his team and that's the type of woman i want i don't want you know women who have one foot in one foot out or just sort of sometimey flaky none of that so you know i was thinking like the best relationships i ever had uh were when women would respond to me in that way you understand where it was the utmost respect, where it was like they, you know, they treat you as if um, they're like, damn, you are the most important thing, period. You feel what I'm saying? And so it's a different feeling than dealing with girls who are sort of all over the place, who are sort of wishy-washy girls on that other nonsense. So that's that's kind of like where that came from. And I was thinking about that. And I was like, it's like a, a night and day difference, uh, you know, dealing with girls who actually are feeling you, feeling you and girls who are just sort of like on the fence. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
because uh, a lot of guys, let me ask you this, because a lot of guys would be like, well, Mr. Lucario, the girls who were like on the fence, like as long as they're, you know, maybe like having sex with me or whatever, like should, should that even matter? Uh, what, what would you ask? What would your answer be to that question? Like, and, and describe the characteristics of what a woman is on the fence. Like, can you go into more detail about that to kind of clarify that? Right. So anytime, anytime a woman is not giving you a hundred percent cooperation in any area and you know, it's, it's, she's on the fence. Meaning if you text her and she takes three days to text you back, she's on the fence. You feel what I'm saying? If you set a date and she flakes, she's on the fence. If you are trying to have sex with this woman and she's giving you the run around, she's on the fence. You understand? Like anything where it seems like a struggle, like they're trying to pull teeth to make something happen. She's on the fence. When a girl is really feeling you, everything should seem easy, almost too easy. Almost like, you know, like it, it's your, it's almost like a guarantee. Like it's like, I, if I text this girl, she's going to text me back within five or 10 minutes or whatever. If I, uh, set a date with this girl, she's going to come to the date and be on time. You know, if I take this girl to have to home to have sex, she's going to want to have sex with me and we're going to make it happen. So it's, it's that cooperation versus the women who are just sort of like, you know, up and down with it. You see what I mean? And so my thing is you have to understand the difference between those two and the women who um, cooperate a hundred percent. Those are the ones who, 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 who basically treat you like a guy as the guy you actually are as the dude that you actually are because that's the type of treatment you really want from women and the reason why i say this is because once you start getting that treatment you uh stop getting less treatment of the, the nonsense and what i mean is it's not necessarily that there aren't there aren't going to be women who are going to be wishy-washy and weird it's that you're just not going to accept that type of behavior you understand a lot of times the reason why we continue to get this behavior or to, or to experience it is because we accept it and we keep accepting more of it as the norm. But then when you realize there's another side of the spectrum, you're like, oh, snap, there's actually girls who are going to like call me back when I call them, girls that are not going to flake, girls who are going to be cool with me and, and cooperate. Then when you see that side of the game, you're like, I don't want the other stuff anymore. See what I mean? Yeah, let, let me ask you this. At, at what point did you realize this about yourself in right. comparisons to this other spectrum where you were getting flaked on? You know, you were there were taking uh, text messages, you know, too long to respond. Can you can you kind of elaborate on when you personally experienced this or, or was it always easy for you? Oh, no. Nah. Well, the thing was, was I like a lot of other guys thought it's the norm to to have to to go through a, a freaking, you know, obstacle course to get a woman. You understand? Because we learn all the time. Well, they're like, oh, well, you got to meet the girl and talk to her and build rapport and get her comfortable with you and all this other stuff. And so you think that you somewhat have to convince a woman to to get with you. You understand? Or you got to convince a woman to like you. Then what happens is as you, you know, progress in the game and as you keep talking to different women, and this is why I say it's very important to talk to a lot of women and it's a numbers game, is that as you're doing it, you start to run into women who are going to be cooperative to you because they're really feeling you. So once you start seeing that, you're like, oh, stop. I'm noticing that this girl is, you know, giving me so much more cooperation than these other two girls over here. Or I noticed this other girl, she's being extremely like, you know, uh, uh, sexual towards me versus these other girls. So you just start to see it more. You start to see more of it because you're putting yourself out there more to be able to see the differences. You understand? And so this is what I tell guys to do is that, you know, some guys are in a situation where they're not getting any type of cooperation or they're not really getting anything going. And then they think this is the end all be all. And then so sometimes they, they fall back. They just be like, well, I'm not going to deal with it. And then they never get to the point where they actually got with the girl who was cooperating with them. But also, too, once you get that type of girl, that this isn't a rare occasion. This isn't something that is like, oh, I'm just lucky. You don't want to have that sort of mindset. You want to have the sort of mindset of this is how it's supposed to be. Not I'm lucky to, to have this girl, but this is how it's supposed to be. So when you deal with a girl who's not like that, you know to charge this to the game. You know to kick it to the curb real fast and not waste too much time on it. See what I mean? You know, I, I definitely see what you mean. Let me do this real quick. Shout out to the people that are in the chat. We have 146 people watching right now. Thank you, brothers, for and some of you sisters, right? There's a good amount of black women in here tonight, women in here in general, uh, both black and non-black. Must be because of Mr. Lucario's here. Do me a favor, uh, like the video. Uh, if you want to subscribe to Mr. Lucario's channel, uh, you can go into the description. Let me just shout out to the super chats from one of our brothers, uh, 
for the Turf Oracle, two honorable pillars, Dr. Duke and Mr. Lacario. Shout out to Brother Turf. Wake the hell up. Duke and Lacario, what's happening? Let women pursue you more because she should chase what she wants with the other way around. Calypso Oregon, my brother, wake the hell up. Great YouTuber and also good collaborator, moderator here. Let me ask you this, brother uh, Lacario. I, I want to get into how do you develop this particular mentality, but before we do that, there are going to be some brothers who are going to be in the chat room and, and they're going to say, and I've seen this multiple times, well, Mr. Lacario, you talk about giving cooperation. Man, you must be talking about only white women, man. You <laughs> must be talking about, hey, I know Lacario is not and hold on dark stalker nigga i am tired don't worry about nothing i'm gonna keep, keep bringing this heat to your motherfucking ass okay you shut your motherfucking ass up all right i'm, I'm sorry carl i had to cuss these niggas out um you know i'm only dealing with i mean you, are you are you talking about black women I, i'm gonna have this mentality with men it's some more i mean are you serious have you heard this before this kind of energy from dudes no nah, it's, it's any woman any woman can be cooperative it's not just white women it's not it's the, the thing is look i you know I date a lot of white women and I've dated a lot. Well, the, the, the woman that I've dated the most when I was coming up was black women anyway, because that's who I was surrounded by in my neighborhood. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. And then as Brooklyn got more gentrified, I got into, you know, white girls, Asian girls and all the other stuff. So it's not necessarily the race. It's more so just finding the particular girl, because a lot of times in any race or whatever culture and all this other stuff, you're going to find women who's going to cooperate specifically with you because they're feeling you and they're feeling the vibe that, that you give. But see, that the problem with a lot of guys is, you know, the cooperation a lot of times comes down to value. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. And so the thing is this, because I and even let's flip it this way. You ever hear a lot of times where women will say, you know, they have a hard time finding a guy or, you know, it, it, it's hard to find a man or whatever. And then they put all these expectations like he has to be this way this way he has to be six foot this blah blah blah, blah. so it's not that women can't get the types of guys they want it's that if they want a specific type of guy if they want that top dude they also have to uh bring value themselves in order to keep that guy interested so the same oh. thing happens for, for us men based off of how uh based off of how much you value yourself and 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 by valuing yourself you actually put yourself on a on a, on a higher plane and you start to do things that create that value within you and just, you know, it comes out. That's when more women are going to cooperate with you because they see the value in you because you first put it in yourself first. So for example, I'll give you a quick example. Okay. This, you know, I have a, a, a bad boy membership program, right? Okay. Now to join that bad boy membership program, it costs $97 a month, right? Okay. Well, some people might be like, damn, that's a lot, like, that's a lot of money or whatever. Right. But what you got to understand is, is that, I put out so much value, you understand what I'm saying, that it matches the price. So it doesn't seem like a, a lot of money. It seems like you're getting what you're paid for. It seems like you're, is an even trade. You're getting uh, the value for this money. And, and in fact, it's almost like I'm giving more value than it's even worth for the money. So what happens is that people feel like, oh yeah, I'll definitely you know pay that as nothing because of all of the value I'm getting. So the cooperation happens based off of the value you put out there. You see what I'm saying? And so the, unfortunately, a lot of men don't value themselves, which in turn creates the situation where they're not getting as much cooperation as they would as, as they would like. You see what I'm saying? And that's that's really what it is at the end of the day. You see what I'm saying? You yeah, know, I understand. Let me do this real quick. And uh, as you, you basically leading into my next particular co conversation there. Let me shout out a, a few other brothers of a. Uh, uh, been donating the super chat and guys come on in and like the video i thank you i really appreciate you for those watching the restream i thank you as well i know everybody can't watch it out at the same time because you know brothers are at work and things like that so uh feel free to man just kick back and 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 and, 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 and just relax here let me let me let me do this erwin i time thank you brother so much my brother frito og always supporting thank you rob is simple thank you for your fire super chat brothers we thank you so much for your support let me let me kind of get into this real quick um now when you hear your topic why women treat you like the guy that you are or like a god we we very seldomly see people with with the mentality that you have now I, I see you know pimps have this mentality uh to a certain degree you and maybe a, a few other dudes but but really what you see is men treating women like they are goddesses all the time Right, right, right. Um, 
let's talk about this because a lot of a lot of men in the Western world, uh, be it you know United States or Canada or England, they they feel that this is the way that they have to get on. This is the way that they they must go out there and do uh, so and so for her. She doesn't have to really do much for him. Let, let's talk about that. Why do you think a lot of men are out here treating women like goddesses for no reason? Well, that's well again that's because since they see no value in themselves, they think their value is coming from acquiring the woman. You understand? So they want, they like, well, I want her. I need her. I will do anything to get her. And so then they'll feel valuable. You see what I'm saying? They'll feel confident after they get the girl. They'll feel like they're worth something after they get the girl. And so they, they're doing it backwards because what you understand is it's in a woman's nature to want to follow a man, to be led by the man. You understand what I'm saying? So she, the, the thing is he's treating her like a goddess but he's coming at her like a peasant. You feel what I'm saying? He's not coming at her as like the, as the god. You feel what I mean? And so that's what that's what messes everything up is is that you have to first see that god within you. You got to see that value within you. And then once you do that, then women are going to start cooperating, and you will see uh, 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 her being that goddess that is worth being treated as a goddess. You see what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. you can't treat a chick like a goddess if she hasn't earned that yet. And she earns that by basically, you know, showing you that she's going to cooperate with you, that she's down for you, that she's actually going to treat you the way you need to be treated as that man. You see what I mean? But first, you have to recognize yourself as that man first. So, you know, it, this, this is why I always have, you know, my slogan is the truth is inside you. Okay. Everything starts from inside you. You got to feel that. You got to understand it. You got to know that first period. You feel what I'm saying? And then that's when things are going to start to work for you. See, this is what this is what confuses guys, and this is the, the one of the key things. When you know, because people may think, because I've had people tell me this, they're like, "Oh, Miss Lucario, you don't, you don't, you know, it's so easy for you. You don't have no trouble getting girls because you know this and you know." Listen, there's a lot of stuff that I go through when it comes to interacting with women. Like, I still get rejected a lot. You feel what I'm saying? I still get women that come around who are uncooperative. But guess what happens when a woman comes around when she's uncooperative? I Cut that off quickly. You feel what I'm saying? I don't deal with that. The problem is men will deal with it and try to get her to cooperate and go through the song and dance. And No, I just kick it to the curb because I need to get that energy away from me as soon as possible. And I'm only accepting cooperation. You see what I'm saying? So I'm always evaluating and I'm always sort of vetting these chicks. Every time when I'm talking to a girl, this is why I like, I'll ask her questions. I'm interacting with her because I'm trying to see if she's worth my time. I'm trying to see if she's worth, you know, uh, dealing with. And I'm trying to see if she's going to respect me and to treat me like that God, even just off the first conversation. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at how she's reacting to what I'm saying. I'm looking at how she's looking at me. I'm looking at her body language. I'm looking at all of that stuff. And that determines whether or not I'm going to keep going with the girl or I'm going to, you know, send her on her way. You see what I mean? And so that's what it is. It's just that you have to be grounded in yourself first and understand that, you deserve better than the BS treatment you're getting from certain women. You understand? And then once you understand you deserve better, then you'll start to look for better and you'll only accept better. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's what it is. Let me, let me ask you a question. What kind of, you said that, you know, if you are not getting cooperation, you know, definitely you, you're not going to be wasting your time. And we're going to talk about exactly how much time or when, you know, like, uh, that you would leave, but you also actually you, you would ask some questions to pretty much uh, see if they are worth you know the, the cooperation. You're going to be asking those questions and seeing how she responds to them. Mm. I'm, I'm I'm curious, what kind of questions are you using to vet this particular woman to see mm. um, if she is potentially going to treat you or be cooperative with your with your program? Right. So. The thing is this, is, is that first, the questions you ask always have to be based off of your value, like what you value and what you care about. So my questions may be different than your questions. So for example, I like a chick who, you know, um, uh, doesn't really like have too many kids. You feel what I'm saying? I also right. like a chick who um, is, is, is comfortable with her sexuality, meaning she's not gonna act all funny if we're talking about sex or trying to get sexual. And I also like a chick who actually has things going on in her life like she's actually trying to make something happen and do something with her life so when i'm talking to a girl when i'm asking her these questions i'm looking for specific answers but also i'm looking for how she's responding to me um, with her energy 
So for example, if I'm talking to a girl and I ask her a question, like for, for example, there was one girl I asked her something about, I asked her something about sex. I said on a scale of one to 10, you know, how freaky are you? Like 10 being really freaky and, and one being like totally not freaky shit. So the response she said to me was, she was like, what kind of question is that? Right? Mm. So now, because she didn't answer my question and the energy that she came at me with, that shows me that she's not cooperative to me. So now I'm good on her. You see what I'm saying? Now I'll ask that same question to another woman on a scale of one to 10, how freaky are you or whatever? And then she might flirt back and she'd be like, oh, you know, wouldn't you want to know? Or I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm on a, a 12 on a scale of one to 10. And, and you know, you'll probably <laughs> find out later. So her whole energy is like warm and friendly and actually wanting to engage with me on that situation. And she's okay. answering my question. Therefore, I'm, I can continue with the woman. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you have to first base your questions on what is important to you, but also see how she's responding and the type of energy she's giving you. And that'll tell you if you need to continue or to call it a day with this chick. The problem is guys, they get so caught up because they see a girl, they think she's fine or whatever, and she'll have some sort of attitude and they feel like they need to keep pushing and keep trying to get her to like them. And it's like, no, you waste me time, bro. You feel what I'm saying? You can see what this, is what guys got to understand. Let, let me ask you this real quick, because um, this thing, this question, for example, how freaky are you? Um, some people might say, okay, well, was it, was it the way that you set the question up or was, was it bad timing on the question? Is, is this one of the reasons that she could have reacted to it? So, so quickly, like maybe if you would have asked the question at a different time, you would have got a different response. I mean, like the things like this, is there, I mean, when you ask a question like this, I mean, I mean, I'm not Lucario the great, right. But how do you know, is yeah. there any timing that mm -hmm. a brother needs if he's going to ask a question? Cause this is a, uh, I mean, for people like you or Alan Roger Curry, it's the easy question to ask, right. But for some of us, some of the brothers who don't have the level of experience that you have, um, if you want to ask a question like this, mm -hmm. when is the right time to ask that particular question? Right. Well, see, the thing is, there, there, there actually is no right time. And this is this is what I was going to say before was uh -huh. that you guys got to understand this. Women, women all the time. Right. What, what, what they go through is this. Women get a lot of guys trying to holler at them, hitting them in, in the DMs, hitting them up on Tinder, all these other stuff. Right. And so for for women, it's hard for them to find a guy that they're really feeling. So women get a lot of attention from men, but they're they don't get a lot of attention from guys they really like. So when they interact with a guy or they're, they're, they're talking to a guy, they're feeling they could, they could be into your look, they could be into your vibe, they could be into your personality, whatever it is, a combination of all that stuff. When they're into you, they don't want to mess it up. This is why sometimes you could literally say the same thing to 10 different girls and you get 10 different reactions. You know, And, and, and some of them are going to be feeling it, some of them are not going to be feeling it. The ones who are feeling it, it's because they actually are into you. They're interested in you. So they're going to respond to it regardless. So it's not necessarily the thing that you're saying a lot of times. It's basically if they're feeling your vibe. And so okay. if they're feeling your vibe and they're feeling you, they actually want, they're intrigued to want to get more, more stuff going. So the thing is, a lot of times, it's not necessarily uh, uh, that. Now, there are times where you're dealing with a girl who... Because she has issues, it don't matter what you say or what you do or whatever, it, she just got issues. So she's going to have an attitude or a feeling based off of her issue, period, no matter who's saying it or what or, or whoever's saying. So that's the thing. But generally speaking, when you talk to a girl and you interact with her, all you need to do is your part, which is approach and, and have that conversation. And then this is when you have to peep out and see her reaction to you because her reactions to you tell you a lot. You see what I'm saying? So it's not, it's not really a right time or a right time to say it or whatever because that's what guys think. They think, oh, well, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have said it this too. I did it too quick or I did it too. No, the girl, if she's feeling me, wants to, wants to make it happen. Mm -hmm. She wants to make it happen. And a lot of times if, if a girl, if you're in the street or at a party or whatever, most of the times these girls have peeped you anyway. So they actually want you to come up to them and talk if they're into you or if they're attracted to you. Then when you talk to them and they feel your vibe and they're like, okay, what's up with this guy? What's going on with this dude? You see what I'm saying? And a lot of times, you know, the chick, she will respond to you positively if she's feeling you. Now, of course, there's little like, you know, things here and there where a girl will, will uh, 
you know, be flirtatious and playful and you need to know how to like respond to that and understand sarcasm and all that other stuff. But at the end of the day, you got to look out for her responses and that will tell you how cooperative she's going to be with you in the long run. See what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. No, 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 no. Great stuff. Uh, shout out to everybody in the chat. Do me a, uh, and guys, we're going to get back to more of the, the game or uh, kind of content on the channel. I promise you we're going to do that. Uh, give me, do me a favor, like the video. And for those of you who are coming in, make sure that you go to the, uh, uh, um, description and subscribe let me shout out to howard man howard is a straight asshole <laughs> like he say he's cool at usa live stream he donates a hundred dollars said can you donate a microphone to mr lucario sounds like he in his bathroom <laughs> no, i got a microphone shit i should have plugged in the microphone oh, okay okay now he he's a good brother man out out the new jersey area <laughs> he's um he's an interesting person shout out to my brother man who support me for a long time mike gates two questions one i asked him to tell me about their father Fatherless females are trouble. Mm -hmm. Two, what part of Chicago are you from? <laughs> uh, no hood bitches. Okay, let me ask you this real quick. Um, is there some truth to this? I mean, as far as, you know, can you get in it? I mean, uh, you know, is there a difference that you see dealing with women like, okay, that they have their fathers there? Do they have a different energy from women who don't have their fathers? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. Like, I remember my, um, one of my exes, you know, she didn't have a father in her life, and 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 that that caused a lot of uh, issues. You understand down the line because see, the 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 role of the father for the son or the daughter in the, in the situation is very important. You understand because for the son it shows him you know what a man's supposed to be like, and for the 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 the, the, the daughter it shows her how to actually respect the man. And unfortunately, you know, if if a woman hasn't had a father in her life or whatever, she doesn't really have that sort of uh know-how or that respect for that man a lot of times okay and so a lot of times you'll be dealing with a woman who hasn't had that father in her life and she may not respect the guy or she may be looking for a father figure in the dude that she's dealing with and if that's the case if you know how to sort of uh mold her or to upgrade her mind then that's a good thing but a lot of times sometimes because she doesn't have that father she may be you know all over the place with with, with certain things you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. Uh, let me ask you, Mr. Lucario. So, um, what? Uh, let's say we have a brother that's listening to the channel, uh, this particular show right now. Mm -hmm. And all right, Mr. Lucario, I feel you know I'm role playing what you're saying, mm -hmm. uh, but historically, you know, I've had some issues. Um, you know, maybe I don't have a lot of money. Maybe I'm not. You know, girls don't find me so attractive. Um. All of these things, right? I've had I've had situations in the past where, you know, I'm not trying to say that I have vitriol, but you know, like some of the guys. You, you heard the incel show I did a few few weeks ago, right? Right. Um, you know, how do I get my mentality from being a guy that sucks with women mm. uh, to feeling like I deserve to be treated like a guy when you know, hey, I'm struggling to get a date. You know what I mean? I'm struggling to get a phone number. Mm. I'm struggling to do all of this. What would you say uh, to somebody that has this? Because I, I believe there are a lot of great, a lot, a lot of guys out here who who know that what you're saying is the truth, but they're stuck in this particular position. I know that you know this too, all, also. So, what's your message to these guys? Right. Well, I would say for those guys, and, and you know, they have to humble themselves and take the game seriously to a certain extent. You, you know what I'm saying? Because what I noticed, and this is this is funny from years, I've been coaching for for, for, for a decade now, and what I noticed is, is that the guys who, because, you know, there's a lot of guys who are in this situation. You know, when I was younger, I was in the same situation, and I learned game from a lot of dudes from around my way and just reading books and doing stuff, but when I started taking it seriously and actually putting myself out there, then I started to actually see results because what happens is, is that every guy's going to go through the, the bullshit. You're going to go through the rejections. You're going to go through chicks playing you. You're going to go through chicks playing games. You're going to go, you're going to go through all of the, all the stuff you don't like. Every guy's going through it. You see what I'm saying? But see, the difference is, is that the guys who actually get things going are the ones who don't stop and the ones who keep improving on the game and learning things. Because it's the thing. There's certain things that you don't know. And that's the reason why you're not getting to that next level. So if you knew that thing and you applied that thing, you would get farther. 
You see what I mean? But what happens is, is that you're so stuck in the situation and you, you let the situations get you down that you don't keep going. You understand? It's the same thing of like if someone's in business. If a person's in business, they're going to go through a lot of hardships in business and they're going to keep failing. They're going to keep going through a whole bunch of nonsense. But the people who make it are the ones who keep stepping up their game, learning new things that they need to do. And then you end up finding out, oh, these, this person's blowing up. They're making money. They're doing what they got to do. So it's the same process is that you got to take it more seriously. The, the problem is, is like, for example, I had a guy who hit me up and he was like, you know, I told him, I said, listen, you're not, you got to go out there and talk to multiple women. And I said to him, how many women have you talked to today? And he says zero. So I'm like, what, what do you expect to happen? You're not, you didn't even talk to anybody today. You see okay. what I mean? So if you're not doing the work, if you're not putting yourself out there, if you're not always consistently, and the, and the key word is consistently, you see what I'm saying? You have to do this over and over and over. It's not this part-time thing. It's not this thing you just do when you feel like it. It has to be something that you implement into your life. Just like if you were working out, if you want to get fit, you want to get that six pack, you want to, it's something you got to do consistently. And so once you do that, then you're going to start to see results. See, the problem is they're not seeing results is because they're staying in the same space, inspecting things to stay, to, inspecting things to happen, but it's going to stay the same. You see what I mean? And, and that's the problem is that you got to understand you're not special in this. You understand? Every guy is going through the, the shit you're going through. The ones who get things going, the ones who succeed are the ones who push through that so they can get to the success. Period. That's all it is. You know what I'm saying? So this is why I tell people, like, you have to stay on top of it. You have to be consistent. This is why even on my membership program, the Bad Boy Membership, I come out with new things every month. That's the, that's the point of it. You see, you see what I'm saying? Because I tell guys, you know, you can watch the free videos. It's great. We give little nuggets here and there. But you're not really going to get to the point where you need to get to if you're not really implementing all of the things that you need to do to get yourself to that next step. That's the, that's the problem. You see what I'm saying? Let, let's talk about i mean as far as you, you you say staying in the same space let me do this real quick before we get into that uh let me shout out to uh desirel okay this is this is a very interesting uh she's a moderator here uh, I, I actually addressed this question she says if a woman is comfortable telling you how freaky she is in the first conversation that should be a red flag okay let's let's deal with this particular <laughs> Uh, I, I think I think it's an interesting point of view, uh, at least a woman's point of view. What, what do you? What do you? What, I mean, with your expertise and your PhD in this game, mm -hmm. uh, what would you? What would you say to that particular question? I would say actually the opposite. If you if you're talking to a woman and she doesn't want to tell you how freaky she is in in the first you know conversation, if y'all bring that up. That's a red flag if she doesn't tell you. You know why? Because you're dealing with a woman who's manipulative. Because most of these women out here are, are have some freaky shit. But see, they, she doesn't want you to know that because either she's scared of how you're going to judge her based off of that, or she's going she she doesn't want you to know because she doesn't want you to know that she gets down like that. Either way, she's not being honest with you. So when a woman is 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 comfortable, that's why I said I like women who are comfortable in their sexuality because if they're comfortable letting you know that and talking about that, that's telling you that she's comfortable enough to be honest with you and keep it real with you. The problem with a lot of guys is, and this is why you have so much trouble in the game, is because you're dealing with women who feel as if they can't be honest with you. Therefore, they're already starting the interaction with you through manipulation. And this is why you get played. This is why you get... Uh, 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 things happening to you that you um, don't want to happen later on. This is why you feel like, oh, these girls out here is messed up. They do this and do that. And the reason why you, you feel that way is because the real them comes out at some point, but they didn't show you the real them from the beginning. So if the girl's scared to show you the real her from the beginning, then that's a red flag. You see what I'm saying? Because now what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for disappointment at the end of the day. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. Shout out to Mr. Grandeur. I'm piping that tonight. <laughs> That's my boy right there, moderators. Guys, thank you so much. Do me a favor, uh, and let's get the 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 uh, the likes up real quick, uh, if we can, on the video. We have 266 people watching, 109 likes, five dislikes. So, brothers, go ahead and, and, and like the video. I want to I want to kind of get back to this particular uh, space, staying in the same space. Um, okay, so let, let's give you the scenario. I'm a guy. Uh, let's say I'm struggling. Um, with women, I come across, you know, some, some Mr. Lucario's uh, teachings, some of his videos um, and things like that. 
And, and let's say you were to have a one on one conversation with me and you and you ask me, like, you know, what's my surroundings like? I don't know if you would ask that, but, you know, all of my friends, you know, they they they're they don't like approaching chicks. They they're not, you know, the guys who like talking to women and stuff like that. Um, none of my friends I hang around get women. Um, but uh, so but again, uh, when you're saying stand in the same space, can you also mean just getting away from people who are, are not trying to do the same things that I'm doing? It, it's you know, like a guy who's an incel, him hanging around other incels is a no no, yeah, right, exactly, right. So, you, <laughs> so yeah, you definitely that's that's one thing you definitely if you because look, if you're surrounded by people that's doing a certain thing. That's going to rub off on you. That's that's going to be part of, of what you're also going to be end up doing. And so the thing is, this you know, this is why you know even myself as an entrepreneur, um, I'm so I'm surrounded by people who were not entrepreneurs. So it, it was hard because it was like, you know, people say, oh, it's not going to work, and who's going to do this and that, and you're never you're not going to make any money. So once I started surrounding myself with more people had I had that like mind, it was even a little bit more easier for me to make that change. So a lot of times you you're, you're it's hard for you to change because you are surrounded by people who are you know have that same negative mindset that you have or who are you know um, thinking that same way that you're thinking just like even you know when I look up when I look online there's a lot of people online when I talk about game and I talk about attracting women where they 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 think that it's only just about your looks so it's a, a, a band of guys who subscribe to, oh, it's only about your looks. And if you don't look like a male model, you're not going to get a girl. So therefore, if you're surrounded by that all the time and you think that and you think you don't look good, then therefore you're not going to get girls. You're going to stay in the same place and you're never going to step up your stuff. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, let me let me do this real quick because we got a, uh, another donation from a USA live stream. And uh, let me read it. Yeah, I got too many windows up in this motherfucker. Shit. <laughs> He says, I agree uh, with Desirel. What self-respecting woman would uh, is going to tell you that how freaky she is uh, or how freak Yo, these all dudes. she's on the first. So, yeah, let's talk about that. Can, 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 can a good woman that actually is relationship or, you know. Yo, wait, let me let me tell these guys something. Let me, can, I, can I say something real yeah, quick? Go ahead, go ahead. You guys need to stop the bullshit. This is, this is, this is why I keep getting played. Listen. These girls out here are fucking and sucking. Believe that. These girls out here are freaky. Don't let them see. Understand this. When a woman meets you, right? She sees you as either like the alpha male type or the beta male type of dude. A lot of guys out there give that beta male energy. So a woman says, oh, well, he's going to judge me for being sexual. So I'm going to pretend I'm not that way, right? When the alpha male steps up to her, he's stepping to her as a sexual guy. Like, y'all want to fuck the shit out. Y'all want to make some shit happen. So she's like, finally, a guy who gets it. I want to fuck. He wants to fuck. Let's make it happen. You see what I mean? And so when you come up and say, oh, well, well what's a respecting woman is going to do? And first of all, what you got to understand about respect is this, right? Respecting yourself means that you actually care or you hold in high regard how you really are, who you really are. So if a woman likes to have sex, if a woman likes to do her thing, and this is what she's about, and she expresses that, that means she's respecting herself. If a woman likes to fucking suck and she's pretending to you that she doesn't because she's trying to put on some facade, that means she's actually disrespecting herself. So a lot of times these women are disrespecting themselves in front of you by pretending they're not freaky, by pretending they don't like dick. You understand what I'm saying? You got to understand this, guys. If y'all don't understand this, you're going to be lost in this game because you're thinking, oh, there's, these, there's this good girl in the bad girl. I said on my Facebook one time, I said, guys say I like the good girl, but I don't like the slut. And I said, that's like saying I like Clark Kent, but I don't like Superman. It's the same. <laughs> it's the same person. She's right. just pretending in front of you to be a certain way because you're acting that way. You see what I mean? Like, it's crazy. So let me ask you this. When, when, when did you find out mm -hmm. at some point in the game that Clark Kent is Superman? Oh yeah, I feel yeah, like, that kind of scenario. I had a few times. I remember this is this is the, the, the time that because I've had it uh, done a few times, but this is the time that was the icing on the cake. I had a, there's a, a dude I used to hang out with years. Let's make like ten years ago, and 
he was the type of guy who was like, you know, he he was he, he's a player. He's like, yeah, I just, you know, he's just going around messing with different girls. He met this one girl and he said, yo, I met this girl. She's a good girl. We've been we've been seeing each other for, you know, a few weeks or whatever. But like he's going all crazy about this girl. So he was like, y'all, you know, I'm having this party. I want you to meet. She's going to come to come through to the party. OK. Right? So I said, why haven't you hit it yet? He <laughs> said, oh, well, this is the thing. He said, oh, nah. she said she's trying to wait and she's not that type of girl. So I'm like, all right, whatever. Come to find out. Come to this party. He introduces me to the girl. The girl he introduces me to, I fucked already like three times. And I fucked her the first time I met her. You understand what I'm saying? Wow. So, so what happened was when I when I saw her and he introduced me, she stuck her hand out first and said, oh, hey, hi, it's nice to meet you, to pretend she didn't know me. So I shook her hand and I said, oh, it's nice to meet you and shit, right? So I didn't want to tell, I didn't want to make it awkward. So after like everything was done, I called dude the next day and I said, my dude, I got to tell you, man, like that chick, I didn't hit that already. You see what I mean? You see what I'm saying? So he thought he was dealing with some good girl type of joint and I hit it the first night and I hit it two more times after that. You see what I'm saying? So if the good girl and the slut are the same girl. They just treat guys. They just do different shit with different guys. This is what guys don't understand. You see what I'm saying? So I don't understand what's why do still think this shit? I'm like, it's, it's not that hard to understand. You know what I mean? What What was you mean after you you did that, right? I mean, you called the dude bad, and you told him that you hit you hit that before. What was his response to you? He was well. The thing was, <laughs> he said that he sort of figured because he felt sort of like tension in the situation. But what happened was, it was a big party, so I met her and I walked away. It was just dealing with other people at the party. When I left, I called them and I, I called him the next morning. And I said, "Yo, listen, you know, I got something to tell you. You're probably gonna be upset, but I didn't want to tell you there, this and this and that." He was like, "Yo, man, you know," but he, he thanked me for telling him. At least he wasn't, you know, he wasn't being on some, you know, super emotional stuff. But what it taught me, and it also taught him at the same time, was the good girl and the slut are the same woman. <laughs> so when you guys are out here thinking, "Oh, this girl," Look, I've been in situations where girls were going on dates and I just had sex with them. Like, I'll be at a girl's house. We finish having sex. She's getting dressed. I'm getting dressed. I'm leaving her house and she's on her way to a date. And she didn't brush her teeth or nothing. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I've had, let, let me tell you something. I was with a girl one time. Uh, I met her at her crib. She was, she was there with her ex-boyfriend or whatever, right? And the ex-boyfriend was leaving, and supposedly her and the ex-boyfriend still cool. They're still friends or whatever, right? So I'm in her house. She's giving me head in the house, right? And then her ex-boyfriend was uh, working at some club or whatever. So we went to the club he was working at. So we walked to the club. No, no mind, she gave me head. We walked to the club. She walks up to him, and she gives him a big hug and kiss on the lips. She just been sucking my dick 45 minutes ago and kisses him on the lips, she didn't brush her teeth. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so, so I'm t I'm just trying to tell you guys this so that you understand that these women out here ain't, ain't just angels and all this other stuff. You think you got you got to get out that fantasy. If you if you stay on that fantasy, you're gonna get played. You're gonna get your heart broken. You're gonna be. Like, and I'm not saying that this is anything bad. This is just reality. Right. You see what I'm saying? So you know, that's what it is, man. No, that's that's a very interesting story. Let me also lead to my next question about how some guys maybe have different experiences in the game and that shapes their identity politics of women. So we'll talk about that real quick. But guys, thank you for coming. We have over 300 and something people watching right now. 321. So do me a favor. Who has not subscribed to Mr. Lucario? Let me know live on the chat. And for those of you who are watching... um live thank you so much those of you who are watching the replay thank you so much if you have not subscribed to mrs lucario press one i will get the channel and you can go in the description but let me shout out some of the super chats and brothers if you want to support the show you can definitely do so um by hitting the super chat or, or liking the video uh let me do this real quick damn these live streams these boys <laughs> shout them out man all these damn super chats. okay wake the hell up women lie to guys who are aware of her tricks and I think he had another one, brother Wayman Brown out of New York. Thank you so much, brother. Desiree Jones, she may be a freak, but that should not be a part of the first conversation. If you're looking for wifey, 
get to know me before my coochie. All right, I, I will answer that real quick. Okay, because we have some women in the, in, in the chat supporting today. Women are not prudes. They are getting pile driven. Uh, and I think wake the hell up. Either she get on board or there is a door hotel. <laughs> All right, guys, let, let's kind of get to this this particular question, right? Because we have a we have a woman that's here, um, that that is uh, is saying that. Uh, I'll read it to you again. Let you respond to it, Mister Lucario. Let me go back up here. She may be a freak, but that should not be the prefer be a part of the first conversation. If you're looking for wifey, now if. You're looking for wifey. Let's assume you have a client, Mr. Lucario, that is looking for wifey. You know, right. I know you have clients that, that want to do different things, right? You just don't just deal with just it's not limited to just, you know, casual sex, right? You have guys that want actual long-term yeah, relationships. Right? right, all that, yeah. How would you deal with uh, a guy who is looking for a long-term wifey mm. What would the approach be? Would you ask that same question or tell him to ask the same question? Well, yeah, if that's if that's important to him in looking for a wifey, yes, he has to ask that question. You see what I mean? What whatever you're looking for in that girl is the questions and the things you need to be asking. So if mm -hmm. I if I want my wifey to be a freak, hell yeah, I'm gonna ask her that question. It, and it, it could be the first question. You see what I mean? Because I want to see how comfortable she is with that or or the level of comfort. So to see, well, maybe you know. If she could, if she's coachable, I can get her even more comfortable, whatever it is. So the questions you ask have to be based off of what you want within that girl. So it could be about that. It could be about, you know, her, her, how she deals with money. It could be how she, you know, deals like this. She like kids, whatever it is. It depends on you. But remember, I said this a million times in, in my videos, the game is about you. It's not about her. So, you know, I, 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 I respect that. Um, the, the woman in the comment section act, you know, said, you know, uh, said what she said. But what she said doesn't pertain necessarily to me as a man, because if you say, oh, well, that's the, that shouldn't be the first thing you say. That's her opinion. But I'm the man seeing if you're the, you, the woman is good enough to fuck with me. You see what I'm saying? It's a whole different mm -hmm. mindset. So this is the problem with guys is that they they're, they're following women too much. And they're, they're, they're listening to what women are saying too much. And this is why they have issues in the game. You understand? You can't you can't go off of what women say. You have to understand what women respond to, and what women respond to is a man, a masculine guy. You understand what I'm saying? And that, and a masculine guy will ask you whatever the fuck he wants. You see what I'm saying? So that's it. You know what I'm saying? And that's the vibe that they'll get when they see that you are that dude. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Let me let me uh uh, uh bipolar Gemini. How did I get here? YouTube suggests so much random stuff. Uh, let me let me deal with her real quick. Don't time her out, y'all. I mean, baby, listen. Yeah, damn, young Jay. Why did you time her out? <laughs> Nigga. Man. <laughs> All right, boo, you, you must be here for a reason, right? Because you like the show. Okay, so calm your ass down. and Because you've been here for like 30 minutes. You've been commenting, so... If you didn't like the show, you would you you would have left. This nigga timed her out like immediately. Nigga, I mean, like, damn, she would not sitting in bed, man. Y'all moderators, y'all gotta chill out, man, on that instantaneous timing the motherfucker out. Okay, let me let me kind of get back to um, dealing with some of the strategies. I know we always talk about this, right? And I know you're a big strategic person. Mm. Um. This whole concept of, all right, you ask a guy how many women have we talked to today? Mm. That was something he says zero. Mm. When a guy is coming on to the program uh, with Mr. Lucario and you put the action plan for him to increase himself with, with more women, how many women are you trying to get him to talk to today? What, what's the first kind of steps? That these brothers should take and things like that. I mean, that, that you would say if 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 you're you're wanting to get this abundance kind of a mindset and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, pro approximately, are we how many women are we talking to a day? Are we just trying to warm each you know our, ourselves about just saying hi to certain few women and mm -hmm. then approaching? How do you how do you deal with your clients in this in this fashion? 
Right. Well, it, it, it all depends. So, like, let's say if a guy is um, a beginner, like, he's really scared to approach girls. He has that anxiety or whatever. You know what? I have a program which is on my on my site you guys can get. It's called Master Approaching Women in 30 Days or Less. And it's only $7. So, you, all of you guys can get that. It's, it's real simple. And so, in that program, I teach guys, you know, just little steps they can do when they're outside, when they're interacting with women to make it easier for them to approach and, and actually just talk. So a lot of times for certain guys, it's just being able to open their mouth and say anything. So for example, it may be something as easy as saying hi to five women today. And then, you know, in practice doing that for like a week or something so that you get used to just saying hello or hi, whatever, nothing too big. You understand? And then after that, you do a little bit more and more until you get the hang of really going, you know, interacting with the women and you start exchanging numbers, doing that type of stuff. But as far as in general, I, you know, I would say for for a guy, and I know depending on the, the 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 you know you might live in a small town or if you live in a big city, whatever it is, but you should at least, and this goes all across all platforms. This could be uh, online, you know, online dating, Instagram, Facebook, outside in the street, at the club, at the bar, at the party, whatever. Any way you can, you should be at least talking to about like twenty to twenty five chicks a day. You understand what I'm saying? And so what happens is, is that the more women you talk to. Right. That's the more chances you're going to have to find a chick that's going to cooperate. And what it does is that it practices your verbal muscle. You understand what I'm saying? It practices your skill on actually talking to women. So, for example, you know, myself and even you, O'Shea, we do a lot of, you know, uh, video blogs, podcasts, whatever it is. And so we've developed into to, to a way where we're able to just talk. Like we could literally if we if, if they had a challenge, we could probably do this for 24 hours if we wanted to. You see what I'm saying? But because we've been doing it so long, it's become a part of us. You see yes. what I'm saying? It's become easier. Like you probably, I'm sure you just come up with questions on the fly sometimes, or you might, you know, you know how to moderate a little bit better. And sometimes right. I'll talk, someone will ask me a question quickly, and I mean, I'm quick to, to just say whatever I got to say. That came from practicing it. So the amount of women you talk to, that's giving you more practice, and it's upping the chances of you getting specific women. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Let me let me ask you this because you made an, 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 another video that man it's probably one of the be better videos I've seen from a dating coach in a, lo a, a very long time. Um, and because you said you know we have to gauge this person you know if he's a beginner if he's intermediate whatever right and we all know that there are some guys who really think that they're advanced that are really beginners you know right. what I mean. Um, and we've talked about the fake players okay. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the fake players because. Mm. Some of these niggas out here are. We gotta do a whole show about only one type of man. Right. Let's talk about the who is the fake player out in this motherfucker. Well, basically, you're a fake player if what you're doing is you're pretending to be something you're not. That's that's really what it is. So it, it's even as simple as let's say sometimes guys will, will you know, like if a, if a chick texts you or, or call you or whatever, or let's say she just texts you. What a, fake, what a fake player is going to do is he's going to see the text and then he's going to be thinking about texting her, but he's going to say, no, let me wait a, another two hours and pretend I'm busy so that she could think that I'm high value and then she'll like me more because I waited two hours to text her back. You see what I'm saying? And so uh -huh. that's fake shit. Whereas you could have just texted her and y'all could have made something happen. You see what I mean? So he's doing things to pretend that he's, you know, uh, uh, on some other type of level, but he's not really doing it. Now, if a chick texts you and you saw the text, but you was in the middle of something and then two hours passed and then you did text her back, that's real shit. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so it's that thing, it's the energy that comes across because when you actually meet the girl in person, if you have that fake player energy, she's going to feel that while she's dealing with you in person. If you got, if you're a real player, if you're just really doing your thing, then she's going to feel that. And so what happens is, is that the, you can only fake for so long. And some, you know, at some point, the real you is going to have to come out, and then she's going to see the real you, and then she may be like, "What? Who the hell is this guy?" You feel what I'm saying? Instead of you just cultivating a lifestyle that creates you into that person who's that dude, and then you can just, you know, go in as you please and do it, do what you want, and then women are actually going to gravitate to you. You see what I'm saying? And the reason why dudes do all that fake stuff is is really deep seated in insecurity because they feel like who they really are isn't, uh, you know valuable so they have to fake it you see what i'm saying why do you think that dudes i mean what do you think this this kind of concept because a lot of guys from what i've been you know you get a girl's phone number right don't call her for 
uh, three or four days. You know, that's like the it, 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 where do where do people get this kind of uh, these these theories from? You think like you get well, a phone number, don't call her until four days later, stuff right, like that. Right. Well, a lot of that is kind of like you know old school type of stuff, whatever. But especially nowadays, shit moves fast. You feel me? You, you know, we we're, we're, we're in the everything is just moving at the speed of light, whatever. So. There's certain things you can do, like when you first get a girl's information, and I, I've said this before, when you first get her number, you want to hit her up the next day at least because you want to move fast. Now, once you hit her up and let's say I go on a date and you had a good time on a date, then you can like, you know, wait a few days, wait a week, whatever, to hit her back later because she's already had a taste of you. So once you got her information, you want to get her to the experience as quickly as possible, which means hit her up as soon as possible. Then once you hit her up, then you can, you know, take it from there uh, you know and do your thing but the thing is a lot of guys they don't understand the game they don't understand how these things work they don't understand how women think they don't understand how women operate because if you if you go to any girl's tinder profile she probably got like 60 70 dudes in the queue so you get her number you waited three or four days three or four days is too late she's already on some other dude you understand radar at this point you see what i'm saying so Waiting too long, that's gonna that's gonna mess up your whole situation. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let me just Ed Grant. Hold on a second. This 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 this, this nigga with this Jehovah Witness suit, <laughs> bro. Look, I appreciate what you're saying, mm. but stop saying the same shit with your Harry Belafonte looking ass. <laughs> what 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 are you doing over here? You look like somebody granddaddy. If you don't get your old ass on. I hate when niggas spam my comment section with the same continuous shit. If you don't get your offering raisin usher, his eye is on the sparrow at the random funeral singing Deacon Jones calling ass out of here, nigga. All up in here. Uh, y'all ain't got to keep timing them out. But the nigga just keep p- posting the same shit. Get those STDs, kid check. Get those. Bro, we seen it the first 30 times you put that shit in there. <laughs> God, why do you niggas do that? It's okay. always one of you old ass niggas with one of these uh, Mervins buy one get one a uh, 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 buy one get none free suits on the hot ass ass suit. You know it's hot to be having that shit on your profile picture, and it's the summertime. You better change <laughs> that shit up. You got some shorts and t-shirts. I mean, that, that nigga got on a, a a suit jacket with some shorts and and, and some. Uh, I, I seen a, a, one of these Nigerian Negroes. I was at a party two weeks ago, and this nigga had on a suit jacket with some shorts with some uh, loafers on with no socks. I'm like, this nigga feet got to be mistaken. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so let me let me uh 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 kind of get back to uh, uh, any other symptoms of the fake player syndrome. Right. Well, what the thing is, you know. A, a, a lot of dudes really, again, it, it, this is what I was talking about earlier. It comes down to value and, and how you value yourself. Because, see, when, when you value when you value yourself, there's no need to fake. There's no need to, to lie. There's no need to be, you know, phony. Because what it is is that who you are, you think that who you are is so fucking awesome. You, you're you like, what would I need even need to 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 do anything other than me. You understand what I'm saying? Why would I need to show anything other than who I am? And so, again, the reason why you don't want to show who you are is because of that lack of value. It's because of the insecurity. Because the thing is, is that you think that faking it or pretending, you understand, is going to get her to like you or get the girl to be interested. And the reason why you think that is because you think she won't be interested in you being just you. You see what I'm saying? And so it's about getting the guy to understand his value so that therefore he can actually you know do things in a more authentic way and also get more authentic situations when it comes to the women he's dating see what i mean let me let me ask you this because i mean i know that you are um one of us african-american dating coach do you deal with a lot of more black male co- clients than not mm. um well i have a lot i have a lot of black male clients but i also have asian clients okay. indian white you know so it's, it's all over the place um okay. But so I so I don't I don't call myself like a, a black dating coach. I think I think Alan Roger Curry also mentioned this. He's like yeah. he's like I'm a I'm a dating coach who's black, but I'm not a black dating coach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so it's that type of stuff because you know, just as a, a man, you know, of course I know there's gonna be situations that black men 
are going to have this problem that's going to be different than other men. But as far as just men in general, we're still going to have situations that are going to be similar when it comes to just, you know, dating and relationships and dealing with women. You see what I mean? So. The reason why I'm asking you is this, because when you look at the uh, at confidence as far as, you know, groups of men, what issues do you think, like, when the way that black black men look at themselves as, as men mm-hmm. are uh, the clients that you have that are Indian or Asian or the confidence issues, are they the same or, are, you know, like, do, are black men more likely to look at themselves like they need to be respected more or do the other groups? Do you get what I'm saying? Right, right, right. Well, the thing is, you know, but this is what's funny to me. I feel like I feel like black men. It just is. This is just what I've seen. Okay. I feel like black men are a little bit more confident when it comes to the relationship aspect, as far as dealing with women, than I've seen in like Asian dudes, Indian dudes, white boys, and all that other stuff. Okay. And the reason why I say this is because, as a black guy, and this because I've heard this. Uh, plenty of times where I've heard people say, you know, from other guys from other races say, oh, you black guys got it easy. All these women want you black guys because you got the big black dick and all or whatever. You see what I'm saying? So they they already think that we got the shit, you know, made. Now, I know there are black guys who have issues like you might be a nerdy dude or some shit or you might just be, you know, whatever. And you're going to have those issues, too. Um, But what I would say is, is that at the end of the day, you know, I feel like all type there's a all men from all different spectrums who have issues with um, confidence. You understand? And, and, and the thing is, this is why I talk about this all the time. And, and confidence is the hardest thing to talk about with people because they're so caught in the matrix. They're so caught in, you know, well, I don't got this and I don't got that and I don't look this way. And then that's the thing that, you know, hurts a lot of dudes when it comes to confidence because they don't even understand what, what we're really talking about when we talk about that shit. You see what I mean? And so, Therefore, they don't get the confidence or they don't feel the confidence. They don't see the, the confidence within them. And then nothing really happens no matter what race they are. You see what I mean? It's crazy. Okay. Okay. Guys, do me a favor. Uh, let's get the likes up here and uh, 330 people. And I actually, right after this show, we have uh, a, another stream, which is you can't be in the black community unless you have a black woman. That's what the brother yesterday. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be a group one. So we have that. Um, and, and, and so I really want to thank Mr. Lacario. Mr. Lacario, is there any other parts of this particular video that we didn't cover? I mean, as far as the original uh, contribution to the topic, why women should treat you like a god? Um, did we cover everything on this topic, or were there some other things that we that we missed? Um, yeah, I think we pretty much covered everything. I just wanted, to, you know, the last thing I want to say on that is, um, in the game, you got to just understand that there's a lot of work you got to do. So, you know. And, but you, and you have to work on yourself in order to, in order for you to recognize that God in you, because it's there. It's not see this is the, and this is the problem I was talking about with even confidence and value and all that stuff. A lot of guys think that they need, um, they need a, a fancy car, or a lot of money, or or girls selling saying they cute or whatever to be confident or to feel like they're valuable, right? That's not what it is. The the, the your value is already there. You're valuable because you're you, period. Because you are on this earth taking up the space you're taking up, you're valuable. There's a point to why you're here. So the thing is, you just have to see it. See, the reason why is your, your value isn't being bought out is because you don't see it. It's like, it's like you're, you're like a, a fucking Mercedes Benz with no gas and the fucking, and, it's, and you're just dirty. You have dirt all over yourself, right? Mm-hmm. And you got to wash all that dirt off Put some some gas in your engine, and then when you wash the dirt off the windows, you realize there's a, fu- a whole bunch of diamonds in the inside the fucking Mercedes Benz. That's who you are, but you don't fucking see it because you got all that dirt on you, you got all that insecurity on you. You see what I'm saying? And that's why you're not getting the women you want. That's why you're feeling insecure. That's why you're feeling depressed. All of that shit's happening because you don't recognize it. You think you need shit outside of you, but you don't realize you got the diamonds inside of you. You see what I'm saying? And so that's what I try to get guys to understand. And that's when people are going to recognize it when you first recognize it. If you don't recognize it, nobody's going to recognize it, period. And that's what it is. You see what I'm saying? No, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And brothers, that's why we did this show today, because, again, uh, you guys know I'm not a dating or relationship coach, but I am one of the guys that kind of bring that aspect together, at least for black men, uh, even for the guys who have multicultural audiences like Lucario. Uh, Alan, 
Mm -hmm. uh, Rom deals more, you know, bl black male issues all the time. But a Donovan who deals with a lot of different things. But but for guys like, you know, like this, you know, Lucario is, is here every day on YouTube. He produces the more most content of all of these guys. So, you know, we wanted to bring you this um, in Lucario. Actually, I think he should have like three million subscribers, man, to be honest. It was me. <laughs> he should have more, man. And that's why we want to, you know, even though he has multiple clients of different uh, ethnicities, mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't it be great for our brothers to uh, be supporting one of our own? He's an African-American, uh, just like many of us are. And, and again, we're trying to bring our best people uh, to talk about the issues that black men are going through and how to strategize. Because, you know, you black men, y'all love uh, them big old booties and y'all love women and stuff like that. So, you know, we really want to make sure that we can, you know, bring you that type of game uh, and content that black men want to hear and talk about. Y'all don't want to be hearing about no crazy news clips and shit. Y'all want to hear about that real. OK, so again, and Mr. Lucario is going to definitely give you that real. He's going to give you some content that is is not really out there. He don't do the news stories. He don't do no. All he does is 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 stuff about what you want to do when it comes to women and approach and stuff like that. So I definitely want to thank him for his expertise. We still got 345 people watching right now. Uh anything else you want to add on, brother? Yeah, so just um, you know, make sure you guys what I'm gonna do is I always do this when I'm on your show. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a sale for my bad boy membership program. So if you go to badboymembership.com and join my bad boy membership program, which is where you get 45 through 90 minute audio and video dating advice tutorials every month. So if you join the membership before 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight, August 13th, which is where we're re recording. Um, I'm going to give you my book, How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day for free. I'm going to give you the ebook for free. Okay. And the ebook also comes with bonuses. So all you got to do is join the Bad Boy membership. Go to badboymembership.com. Join that. And then I'm going to give you my book, How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day for free. You feel what I'm saying? So make sure you do that by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. You feel me? So. Make that tonight night and uh i'll put that description um in uh the video what is this channel about time his ass out for being fucking stupid <laughs> so dusty ass all right uh okay and again shout out to my brother full circle man we got to do a show where my brother man, out of out of las vegas is a good brother man i got to get him on these strings but he's been busy so again miss lucario man like i said one of the greats all-time greats man i know that you're like i said a multicultural dating coach but again you know me i deal with just the black manosphere i deal with black men and it's good that i'm able to bring you know another brother that's from our community in to talk mm -hmm. to us because you know how to you know what we, we you understand us in our audience better than you know let's say Corey wayne or somebody like that so you know what's up so I again, again bro i thank you so much brother for coming on and um uh, how do how do you get it? He says, how do I get the physical copy of, of that book, brother? Yeah, so if you want the physical copy, just go to MrLucario.com um, and you go to the store page and then you just click on the physical copy. And what I'm going to do is also when you get the physical copy, I will autograph it for you. So you, you get an autograph and I'll mail it straight to your house. So just click on the, the button that says how to have sex two in a day and you know um, you just get the physical copy. I'll, I'll send you the link too so you can post it under your, uh, your the video and everything. Yeah, yeah. Send me definitely send me the link. And and guys, also let me let me do this. Moderator Mords is still uh to the end of this month. All right. Uh so I'll put that in the description for moderators of 2017. And then after the moderators awards are up, I'm actually gonna do a poll like this every month. So we'll have a different moderator of the month for every month, and then um we know we'll we'll do that. So thank you for the moderators. Y'all a little trigger happy, y'all niggas are crazy. Um, again, you know, Mr. Cario, like, I don't know if you have, do you have a lot of moderators on your channel? Um, I got a few, a few here and there, you know. Okay, so what these Negroes, what they do, once the stream is over. Wait, say that again? Like, once the stream is over, me and you will be left, right? We'll right. be gone. Right. These niggas will still be in here talking shit, and the oh, moderators yeah. will be timing niggas out. Like, that's what always happens. <laughs> What'd you say? That, that, says, that always happens. That's part of the, you know, that's part of the, the thing, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's what happens, you know what I mean? Yeah, but why do they do that? That's some dumbass shit. That don't make no sense. It's the community right there. They like being online, you know what I'm saying? That's how it goes. That's how, you know. They be arguing and shit, man, and cussing niggas out, threatening people and shit, you know? Uh, like, after, like, 30 minutes after this shit be gone, they be still doing that, so. Right, um, right. 
y'all going to jail because y'all y'all better stop that crazy shit because y'all y'all niggas is scripts. Okay, but anyways, thanks again, Mr. Lucario. And brothers, we're we're gonna come right back on the next channel uh with brother George in about 15 minutes. I got a double header. And again, uh thanks again, Mr. Lucario, for all the game, brother. Uh, and I'm subscribed to him on Patreon. I'm Mr. I'm one of the Mr. Lucario's Patreon subscribers. Go to patreon.com backslash or slash Mr. Lucario. So okay. Patreon, that's so you get the bad boy show. It's me and my dude Miles Cunningham. You feel me? Shout out to Miles Cunningham, man. He's doing a great job out there with you guys. In the background, you know what I'm saying? He's chilling back there, you know, hearing all the game and shit. He's like, oh, he's here. Yeah, he's right there. Miles, come and say hi to the people and shit. What up, Miles? He's, he's chilling here, seeing all the fucking, okay. fucking uh, the, the craziness. He's like, tell him what's popping. What's up, bro? What up, O'Shea? <laughs> what's good, man? I'm a little bit now. Hey, are you still on your podcast, man? Is he in Norway? You in you in Poland, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in Poland. Yo, how the fuck, nigga? You wow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> every day, now I say the same shit. How the fuck, nigga? Wow. That's what. That's the same thing. How you take the words out of my mouth? And I'm like, but well, yeah, you know, what the fuck, nigga? Wow. That's what I say all the time. Like Jesus, what did I do to get here? You know. Yo, man. But, you know, if we ever come out there, we definitely going to hit you up, man. Yeah, you know man, what I'm saying? Hey, y'all listen. niggas know y'all ain't coming to no damn Poland. Don't play. <laughs> no, no, listen. No bullshit, though. If if you could get something popping out there and, and shit, maybe we could work together and get a venue out there and, and, and do a boot camp or something, man. man. Well, 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 we go. I am going to have something in, in Atlanta. Right. But, okay. uh, so okay. that's that's probably better for y'all because I, right, right. I don't want y'all to come out. Don't come out. Don't waste your money. Uh, <laughs> meet, meet meet us in Atlanta, okay? Uh, right. you know. Nah, shit, hell yeah, man. We we could do like a, a fucking Black Manosphere convention or right, some shit. Real. You know what I'm saying? Right. Hold on one second. How y'all gonna time out Moses? He's a moderator on the other channel. <laughs> niggas done timed out one of the. Wow, Young Jay, nigga, how you timing out moderators? These dudes is crazy. Oh no, these dudes is wild out here. Yeah, oh, man. Yo, but good to meet you, though, bro. Yo, good to meet you, too. Yo, we came out for no reason. Yeah, all, right. Yo. Thing, all, right? all right, yo, bro. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, so. You know, I'll let y'all later. You know, uh, O'Shea, let me uh, let me know when the join is up, and I'll put it on my channel, too. Yeah, okay. Right, yo, bro. Young Jay, nigga, you need to chill, dog. You, God right. damn. You <laughs> tell your mama out. If you, if you could, grandma, my, my, Jesus, whoever. All right. Shout out to brother Mr. Lucario, man. We about this piece. Thanks. I'm out, man. Peace. Peace.